Developed by Flight School Studios, previous titles being Creature in the Well, Island Time VR, and published by MWN Interactive, known for also publishing Creature in the Well, Mundan, and more. Stonefly is a lush and vibrant action-adventure game where you step into the shoes of Annika Stonefly as she has to recover her family's heirloom, and really, find herself along the way. This is one I've had stuck in my mind since it was teased earlier in the year as it was just this visually stunning trailer with these tiny little mechs and... Well, it was hard for it not to stick out. So I decided to get it on launch day to see whether or not this ended up being a game to remember. Or just all style and no substance. Starting off with the story, it is pretty straightforward. You play as Annika who loses her father's prized possession slash family heirloom Feeling horrible, she sets out to get it back, running into different obstacles along the way. You get to help Annika find herself as you traverse the different treetops and creeks. It's a small story that has a lot of heart. Most of its characters have distinct personalities and can come off as very likable. However, I didn't really find myself getting super invested in it. One issue I found myself being distracted by was the lack of sound effects and cutscenes. It really th makes things seem more awkward when you expect an explosion or a crash just to hear silence. Anyone who's played an RPG or visual novel or a lot of indies know you don't need it to be voice acted in order to connect, so that wasn't the problem here, and neither was its short runtime of around 5-6 to six hours. It just felt like the story didn't get on its footing before kicking off in the end. I think if the story was told from two different perspectives, especially from a character introduced not too far into the game, it would have swayed me, but for the most part, Stonefly as a story just feels like a prologue to something that could be really expanded upon. The gameplay in Stonefly boils down to two things, really. Exploration and combat. The former is arguably my favorite part of it. Soaring through the beautiful treescapes and above little creeks and admiring the scenery, you can just feel the love it was crafted with. The areas you can fly around are short, but there are plenty, being divided between normal locations and ones specifically for story beats. If you have a good enough eye, you'll be able to catch old rusted parts, which you can study to change the appearance of your little bug mech. Side note, I, I really wish there was like a lightning bug variant, but most are just beetle shaped. But that's neither here nor there. The bridge between travel and combat is finding materials you need to engineer new parts. Usually, as soon as you begin to mine, the bugs show up to eat away at the ores, which manages to stay as a minor annoyance. Onto the combat, it can be pretty fun when you get used to it. You gain your abilities over time to help you combat the different type of bugs, and as you progress, the waves become more and more intense almost too intense. Around halfway through I actually started viewing combat as a chore, and even the smallest bugs could launch you halfway across the arena. Now this game is actually pretty forgiving, you have a repair button which has a cooldown but even then it takes a bit to get a game over. It actually becomes fairly frustrating to even do damage to bugs since as soon as you land they're on you, and in big numbers. I consider myself to be decent at games, but Stonefly tossed me around without caring and it really took away from the fun. The few boss fights in the game ended up being rather uninteresting to top it off. There is one point in the later half of the game where a new mechanic slash hazard is introduced, but it just basically disappears after its first use. The biggest flaw Stonefly has, in my opinion, ends up being variety, and it holds it back quite a lot. As for graphics and your visuals and the overall aesthetic, the game is beautiful, hands down. I've said it several times in this review. The art, lovely. The colors and shading, lovely. The OST is a fucking banger. Seriously, if you don't even plan on playing this game, at least check out the OST. Your eyes are gonna love you when you play the game. Your ears are gonna thank you. I mean, there's, there's such good background element to this game that it's enough to sell it for me. Uh, and it's truly an utter treat to get lost just floating around seeing every nook and cranny that the, the devs put a lot of love into. On to performance, I don't think that any one of you will have trouble running this game. I'll throw up the system requirements from Steam on the screen right now and compare them to what I have right now. Uh, there are certainly some hiccups, but they're mostly visual, at least what happened to me. But there were a couple of times where I was stuck between two objects after being flung around by enemies too much. 
I didn't suffer from any major game breaking bugs, and it's probably best to play with a controller to have the smoothest time here. So, while Stonefly doesn't quite hit every mark, the package as a whole is still really lovely. I still think it's something everyone should play and experience at least once. It may feel like a 6 hour prologue, but in the end I'd say I'm a fan and definitely recommend it if you're looking for a chill weekend game with breathtaking visuals. I hope to see more of it, like as a series, and explore what the developers could expand on. I'd really say it deserves more than a chance to shine as a series. You can find Stonefly on PS4, PS5, Nintendo Switch, PC, Xbox One, and Xbox Series X slash S. Hey, if you like the video, you know, don't be afraid to subscribe or like or whatever. Comment your opinions on the game. Uh, I make all kinds of different videos from indie reviews to, to video essays, borderlining on, on chill shit and nostalgia and, and whatever, you know, whatever floats my boat. Uh, until next time, peace.